Well, Casimir was going to head to alert Ineos and Sajim on the other department at Man United that should be tampered with, you know. It is really shocking that for the doctor went ahead obviously signed from Arsenal because Arsenal players are not obviously getting injured. Brought him to Man United. He's a fan of Man United. He cannot really <clears throat> scout out these injuries. What's really wrong with the physio department of Man United? Are we going to come out and compete when you're really having people who cannot really keep our players fit? Does it dig in why we've gone ahead to have very many injuries even as we speak right now? We are having Anton Martial, Lisandro Martinez, Tyrell Malasia not yet back into the squad of Man United. Luke Shaw is also out. So, welcome to this channel. Smash like button, comment and share. <clears throat> we are talking Bruno Fernandes coming out and calling out people like me. You have always going to tell him that, please, you should be playing like the other number 10s, you know. And to bring you up to speed, this reply has also gone ahead to really engulf. Sir Jim Ratcliffe in because he was also criticizing him because he said we don't have a number 10 at the club of Man United and lastly Amade Diallo is excited to face Coventry because he's former player his former colleague that he played with at Sunderland is also into that team smash like button close to 200 times and don't forget to subscribe because we want to hit 17,000 subscribers and we are left with like 50 subscribers so guys continue to go into the lower right bottom corner and smash the black button that has already subscribed after smashing it hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified every time i upload a video onto this channel uh the muslims ramadan <clears throat> mubarak and to the christians we cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ this story has been produced or given to us by trivela that casimiro felt an issue in his hamstring while training ahead of Manchester united versus liverpool he spoke to united doctors <clears throat> and went through examinations but the club officials did not find a problem and gave him the green light to play Casemiro was still in pain and decided to check with the doctor from Barcelona who treated him before. The doctor found a small injury in the area and said the injury could have become a much bigger problem if he would played against Liverpool. So this shows that our doctors are not good enough. That is it. Maybe this guy who came in through from Arsenal, you know, is really good, but he lacks stuff to work with and it is obviously getting more and more and more people to work with because as it stands it looks like everything needs to be tampered with nothing nothing should really really leave and tampered with in here at the club of money and this is why when you are coming in through here we are talking about different people all together and the injuries at man united have gone ahead to cost us that is it meaning that they should be an overhaul into they should be an overhaul into <laughs> the medical department of Man United and Sir Jim Ratcliffe should be looking in through because I tell you, if we had this squad at Man United with limited injuries, we would have gone ahead to compete for the trophy. I tell you this because the top leaders, Arsenal and Liverpool, are just 17 points away from us. And I ask you, do you think we would have gone ahead to lose to um, Brighton at home? Wolverhampton Wanderers, I'm sorry, Brentford, sorry, not Br Crystal Palace, um, Everton at home, you understand? There is another game we lost at home, right? In the Premier League. So, I think we'd have gone ahead to collect more 12 points if I totally had our squad readily available. And it shows you that when he came in through from Arsenal as the top guy, he said that... Um, Lisandro Martinez had been really not had not been well or properly operated and went ahead to get another operation and returned and the good thing was that when he returned and got an injury it was not a metatas a metatarsal injury it was all about any injury that never required him to be uh, operated and that's why you see it that he's up and running with the Argentine national team and we expect him to be available when you're playing against Brentford in the next weekend to come after this weekend we are going to be playing against brentford so <clears throat> after realizing that i said oh we've gonna have to get someone who knows exactly what to do and he's good on the job guess what happens later luke shaw comes back he's operated he goes back tarell malasia was operated i think before he came in through but 
even when they oper- he got a setback and he got operated again, he has not gone ahead to get back. Mason Mount, he has been really taken through rehabilitation close to three, four times, and he has missed the lion's share of the season. <laughs> that is Mason Mount for you. You know, the list is endless. <clears throat> Look at um, Anton Martial for him. We know he's an injury-prone player, but we expected that if at all we get him a more experienced doctor, he will obviously take him to be fit for some time. It has happened to very many players, and Casemiro <clears throat> realized it that when he was playing against Newcastle, remember that game of the Carabao Cup we had beaten by three goals to nil, Casemiro had been ruled out of the Brazilian national team because of a minor injury. He returned at Man United, missed out the game of playing the weekend. In the midweek, they brought him back, and guess what happened? Casemiro got himself off the pitch, and he missed out close to three months of not playing for the club of Man United and we suffered. So he was really keen with the experience and got to know that maybe something might really happen. Force me back on the field of play with this minor injury, it might worsen and see my season really called off again. Yet I think United needs me in the remaining 10 games of the season. And he also knows how he needs to save his career at the club of Man United. Like He's one of those players that has been put on the list to be really sold by the club of Man United. That is it. So, we wait and see how that pans out. But that is another spot that Berada needs to look in through the Ineos. They need to look through it and see how are they going to really happen. For Casemiro, he's going to miss out on the games that Brazil is going to be playing against England. And which other team are they going to be playing? I think in the midweek. But they're going to be playing European teams. Is this Egypt? Then... After that, <laughs> we'll wait and see whether he's going to be available for the game of Brentford. And I don't want to see him forced in the game of Brentford because I know we can win it even without him. But there is a game that is really very particular. Two games next after Brentford. Playing our Chelsea, you know, it's going to be a Thursday game, like on 4th, played on the 4th of April. And another game of football played on Sunday against Liverpool at Old Trafford. Those games will need this guy. You saw to it that when you're playing against Liverpool, Kobe Mainu was isolated, and this is why we need Casemiro into that mix. So, I just can't wait to see him back, but I want to see him ready available. And I don't know exactly what his doctor told him, especially his former doctor in Spain, and if I told he's really a specialist in identifying such injuries, why don't we initiate him in the team of Man United? Because this was a proposal of Eric Ten Hag because he said, Arsenal players were not getting injured, you know, and it shows you that it was a team that was really doing that because at Arsenal, we are not seeing these players getting injured. That is it. We are not seeing the players of Arsenal getting injured like those of Man United, but I really understand <clears throat> that Manchester United players played very many games than those of Arsenal. That's, that's it, by the way, because Arsenal were knocked out of the FA Cup and Carabao Cup early. And they were playing in only two tournaments, the Premier League and the UEFA Europa League. And for Arsenal, they are resting their players because in the UEFA Europa League, they rested Ramsdale, they rested Ben White, they rested Zinchenko, they rested Saliba, they rested Thomas Pate, they rested um, Odegaard, Gabriel Jesus, Bukayo Saka, and Martinelli. They rested nine starting players, you get? And they already started... <coughs> David Raya, mm, Tommy Yasu, Jakub Kivio, Gabriel Magales, um, Cedric Suarez. They brought in Lokonga. Uh, they had to play um, before Trossard came in through. They had to play Fabio Vieira. Uh, they had to play Res Nelson, Edin Ketia. That was the team of Arsenal. Marquinhos was there and was really doing his job. So they rested very many players, by the way. So for Arsenal, they knew exactly what to do. But for United, even when the manager required to rest players, the players were injured. So it shows you that we needed, we need someone special to really compliment. Is it the guy's called Oskol, you know, to do the needful. So we wait and see how that's going to pan out. But this is really a very good highlight to the Glazers that something needs to be done in the physio department to check on our players in there for you and why are they really getting this injured as we really figure it out let's go to bruno fernandez he has come out and really criticized we <coughs> rock and david and the group plus a jim on why 
they think he should be playing like Odegaard, Kevin De Bruyne, and James Madison. He said, <clears throat> people say Bruno needs to keep the ball more, but obviously, if I'm playing in the number 10 position and the ball goes between the lines and I spin, and when the ball goes between the lines, it's because the pressure was high. At the moment in which I turn, the pressure is on my back and I can't go back because if I go back, I will meet the pressure. The ball comes and I can play support or simply keep it and go to the wing. So for me, that's not the problem. The problem is him and when he passes the ball. Having control of the ball, it's all about dictating the tempo because the number 10 dictates the tempo of the game. When the ball is played to him, he can either play a return pass, he can play a wall pass, or he can really do a half turn and then try to really hold a play and really find in a better pass. That's my problem. For me, what he does with the ball is not my problem. My problem is his game reading and really knowing that I shouldn't be doing A, B, C, D. You know, those Hollywood passes are really uncalled for, like he's defending himself that he's supposed to be playing those balls in those lines. That is really total bullshit for me and I don't really call it and I don't really believe in it and he needs obviously coming through and tell us more. Bruno Fernandes added and said, people sometimes have this idea that all players have to do what others do. No, we have specific characteristics that define us as players and make us very good at doing what we do. People have to understand that <clears throat> we do what enhances the quality of the players alongside us. So now, he's like saying the players that he plays with a taunt of serious quality. But Rasmus Hoyland has proven to us day in day out that he's really a typical number nine. Release him, he'll give you the best that you deserve. That's what um, Rasmus Hoyland is going to hate to show us. But as he's going to hate to look him out for, I think just one, for the games they're going to hate to play together. I've only seen Bruno Fernandes look out for Rasmus Hoyland like twice. So that is really, 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 really very, it's really a very bad start for a number 10 if you're feeding your number 9 like that. So Bruno needs to really change because even Sir Jim Rackliff was asked in an interview he did, I think, on Monday or Tuesday. And he told us that what United is lacking <coughs> is a number 10. So if Bruno is calling himself a number 10 and the new owner of Man United and the board that have gone ahead to come in through to run what we call the football operations have come out and identified that we lack a number 10, something has to be checked in Bruno Fernandes to come out and really tell us exactly what he's doing for this club of Man United. So that is it. So Bruno Fernandes, even Sir Jim Ratcliffe, Omar Berada and um, Juan Cloud plus Dave Brasfold understand we don't have a number 10 and i want us to get a number 10 i've already said this if they're going to initiate in a player like mason mount to compete with bruno fernandez the better because i understand no one is immune to getting benched and bruno fernandez should understand it that he's not immune to getting benched he can be benched at any time when the club needs him to go off and really get another player that can do that i tell you one of the problems we are having that has not been highlighted by people <clears throat> is Bruno Fernandes. I've always told you that he doesn't play like a number 10. And the good thing today, I've noticed, and I was very excited when Sir Jim Rakhdiv pointed up on it, was that we lack a Paul Scholes and all a Paul Scholes and Iniesta, a player with high creativity. I was really excited when I heard that from the man who is the 25% minority stakeholder in the club of Man United. So for me, I was really excited. And that excitement should really be reflected in the summer transfer window, like we should be looking in for a number eight, sorry, number 10 to do the job. That is it. So Bruno, I think those are lame excuses, right? So you should really do know that you are not a special player because if the top, top, top teams are really having players who play their ball like that, then why don't you also do it? Because you can do it. We know it. I really saw him in the game of Man City. He did it. The foul chances he created, three for Marcus Rashford and one for Ganacho, he composed himself well and did everything right. So I think he can do it, but the problem is with him that he believes what he's doing is right. He should get to know that that is not what he's supposed to be doing. At Portugal, he plays better, and I don't know why at Man United doesn't really do that at our club 
we wait and see how that pans out. Now, Ahmad Diallo, the man who led us to the semi-final of the FA Cup, was asked that United is going to be playing Coventry in the semi-finals. He said, we play against Coventry, I'll meet my former team mate, Elias Slims. We play together at Thunderland that season, meaning that it's going to be an encounter, a dream come true for him, taking United to that side. And you know, he was really bought a lot of money, 35 million pounds guaranteed fees, plus 5 million pounds of add-ons. That's a lot of money for a player who was just 18. And not even playing the team of Atalanta, you know. But this is when you really understand that sometimes you make signings and they're really for the future. He came in through with Facundo Pelestri, but it looks like Facundo Pelestri is going to be thrown out of the club of Man United. And then Ahmad Diallo is going to really take center stage into that position. Rock and David is my name and hope you guys are really having fun. I sign out for now. See you later. Your thoughts on Kasim Miro, alerting Ineos and Sajim Ratcliffe onto another decayed department at Man United. Your thoughts are welcome in the comment section below. What should they do? Should they suck the entire team? By the way, there is something I had, forgot, I had forgotten to tell you, you know, that when Xavi came in through, he noticed that players were really getting injured a lot. What he did was to suck the entire physio team of Barcelona and brought in a new one. And that new one went ahead to do <coughs> wonders to Osman Dembele. And for the very first time, we saw Osman Dembele play close to... Uh, 25 consecutive games without getting injured. So that was really unseen before at Barcelona, meaning that he realized the problem, he fixed it, and his players were really physically fit. Even right now, Frankie de Jong has been passed fit to play against PSG. You know, the same applies to uh, Rodri, sorry, P Rodri, not, not Pedri, because at first they had told us that these two players were supposed to come in through when they win. Barcelona is going to be playing the final, but they've worked against the clock. Two weeks from now, the player is going to be really available to kick the ball in there for you. What do you make about Ahmad Bial excited about the semi-final against Coventry City at Wembley? Rokan David is my name. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Muslims, Baraklao Fikum. We sign out and see you when you see us. Ciao, ciao, and let everyone really do what he has to do. I'm out. My mates.